Mark, your position at uh, the conference is uh, Volunteer Working Group Chair. Um, do you care to briefly elaborate on some of the tasks you've had to undertake in preparation for this year's Sea Turtle Symposium? Uh, certainly. Uh, first of all, I guess with the, the volunteer chair, we've had to recruit a lot of volunteers. So we've sent out emails to a lot of people in Queensland or all over Australia that have been involved in the various turtle projects and just asked them you know, whether they'd be willing to commit some time before and at the symposium. So first of all, it was recruiting and then at the symposium, it's been sort of organising volunteers into various roles. And the, the biggest challenge is because people are here to see talks. So everyone only wants to do a couple of hours a day. And, and so you have to sort of juggle the, their wishes and, and, the, and the jobs that need to be done. You're also the indiv uh, individual who sets out the biology and conservation subtopics for uh, the talks and posters at the symposium. Um, how did you come to select the topics and uh, you've, why do you feel they're important areas for discussion amongst uh, the sea turtle community? Well, I think this was much more of a challenging role, uh, I have to say. <laughs> a lot more time consuming as well. Um, some of the topics have been traditional topics that have been at the symposium for, for a long time, things like breeding biology, foraging biology, migration, those kinds of things. But we did essentially choose a couple of topics that were very close uh, to the issues in, in our region in Australia and also the broader South Pacific and Southeast Asia. And they were turtle use and sustainable use because we, we, have, an elite, we have a legal uh, use of turtles in Australia and, and turtle use throughout our region is, is very prolific. And secondly, we had the environmental impacts on marine turtles because you know, things like industry, climate change, development, coastal development are all playing a big role in, in shaping our environment and shaping our turtle nesting beaches throughout the region. So that were the two topics that we really tried to tailor for this conference. So I guess here's a little bit more of a, a, a fun question for you. Um, during your journey to the symposium, you've undertaken a vast amount of re, uh, diverse research in the field. Um, I guess, do you care to elaborate on how your field research in, let's say, Vietnam or the Indian Ocean has increased your passion and love for the conservation of sea turtles? Yeah, you're right. There's a lot more fun question to answer. Um, you know, I guess I, I started out as a PhD student working on physiology as a lab-based, field-based project. Spent a lot of time in the field analysing blood samples, you know, getting all this sort of lab work done. And, and at the end of it, I was you know, kind of thinking, well, yeah, that's great, but, you know, at the end of the day, has it actually helped sea turtles? And I was fortunate I got a position with, with Rod Kennett in Northern Territory working with Indigenous communities for a year, and that just sort of snowballed from then, and I um, ended up going to Vietnam and have worked in Malaysia and, and Torres Strait. But the, the one thing that, I guess, ensures the passion, going back to your question, is that you go to these communities and you work with these local people who just have incredible enthusiasm for what they're doing, enthusiasm for the animal, enthusiasm for their culture, and it really just, you know, gives us that motivation to try and you know get things going and, and, and help them out, give them some training and, and also you know learn about where they're coming from to, to help better manage. No fascinating. Well thank you very much for the interview. No worries. Okay, I appreciate it. <laughs>